Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar is sponsoring legislation that would put a 10-year freeze on all U.S. immigration in an attempt to tackle illegal immigration. According to Gosar, the Biden administration has, quote, literally and figuratively opened the gates and waved hundreds of thousands of criminals into the U.S. Joining us now to weigh in is White House reporter for Real Clear Politics, Philip Wegman. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. So what is your take on this with, uh, I mean, do you think that stopping immigration is going to be the, the, the way to fix illegal immigration? It's, it's interesting that Gozar has pivoted from a anti-illegal immigration stance to a anti-all immigration, at least for 10 years. And this is a development on the right that I don't think that we can uh, dismiss, even though uh, its author, Representative Paul Gozar, is, is not the most popular person on the right or the left right now. Um, flashback to the 2020 convention and what did Donald Trump do live on television? Uh, he oversaw a naturalization process under Gozar and company. Uh, that's no longer going to be a thing. And I think this is really interesting because we see in polling that the one area that the public disagrees with Joe Biden the most right now, the one area that they're unhappy with the current president, uh, especially is on his handling of the border. Gozar um, and, and if he's representative of, of any of his House colleagues, essentially seems to be saying, let's not just hit the current administration on the question of illegal immigration. Let's go a step farther. And it's going to be interesting to see if that sentiment takes off on the right ahead of 2022 or ahead of 2024. Because I can tell you almost certainly uh, that uh, his legislation that he has introduced is going absolutely nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty clear. Um, it, it is interesting. It, you, you know, you bring up a great point that people are actually not happy with how the Biden administration is handling the border to the extent they're handling it at all. I think putting Vice President Kamala Harris in charge of that project was sort of like signing her death warrant in terms of her popularity. <laughs> Certainly, she doesn't have any expertise that suggests she would be uniquely qualified, and I don't really think she's the most popular member of the administration anyway. Uh, but it looks, it, I mean, it, there's a perception, I think, based at least a little bit in reality, that it's a disaster down there. But then to go from that to we need to pause, <laughs> pause all immigration for 10 years, <laughs> like that, nothing is, nothing lasts 10 years. <laughs> We'd be in a totally different world by then. Um, so it's, it, it, to my mind, it's an example of the, you know, kind of the fringes uh, getting the most attention, even though they don't really deserve it. And it likely won't even work. I mean, the reason why we're having an illegal immigration problem is because of our broken immigration system. So if we shut it down and say, OK, no more for 10 years, we're not going to let anyone in legally. That's only going to open up the floodgates for more illegal immigration. That's all that's going to cause because no one would be able to get in legally. It would actually make the problem 10 times worse. Yeah, and Gozar is not representative of the larger Republican caucus on this question. Uh, certainly Republicans, I think, would like him to be a little bit more quiet. He's got all sorts of other troubles. Um, he's not exactly uh, someone who's sort of the spokesperson for the party right now. But this may end up being a sort of jump the shark moment where everyone on the right is totally on board with going after the Biden administration uh, for their poor handling of the immigration crisis. Uh, for their lack of seriousness when it comes to dealing with, um, you know, border security. And then all of a sudden, here comes uh, Representative Gozar, who says, uh, no, it's not just a question of illegal immigration. It's a question of immigration writ large. And I, I think their, their, their mileage may vary on this. Um, I, I don't think that uh, this is actually you know, going to hold the, the White House's feet to the fire in, in any way. And, and I think that, again, I mean, uh, this is likely, you know, distracting that there's there's an issue that it seems ready made for Republicans to ding the president on. And for whatever reason, you know, some like Gozar want to go an extra step um, and sort of uh, allow their reaction to become the story rather than the, the underlying situation. It also doesn't make sense because, you know, we saw some gains, right, uh, for the Republican coalition among certain uh, immigrants, um, it, some Hispanic Americans, uh, 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 the Cubans in Florida, they, they, I think, helped deliver the state again to Trump. 
uh, it, it's you know it's it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy I think when Republicans are so concerned that immigrants are going to come here and then vote against them but there are you know there are some, many immigrants who come here hate socialism are religious uh, you know believe in capitalism want to work and and would be are certainly gettable for the Republican Party we've seen that they are so that, so if you demonize them and also they're not they're not in favor of illegal immigration so if you I, demonize no. all immigrants it's, it's just backfiring, isn't it? I'm really glad that you brought that up because the uh, National Republican Senatorial Committee um, last month, had, they rolled out a bunch of polling which showed essentially uh, that the coalition of the ascendant, that coalition that brought uh, Obama to a second term in the White House in 2012, that that sort of had fallen apart, that no longer were you going to have all of these disparate uh, minority groups coming together uh, to support Democrats, that 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 uh, demographics were not destiny and that instead Republicans had an opportunity to to win over, you know, some of these these minority voters, whether it was black men or Latino men or, or, or others. Uh, this rhetoric from Gozar sort of seems to throw a wrench in that. And I, I think it's going to be interesting to watch, you know, if this does gain traction. Um, but but overall, what does this show us? It shows that you have, you know, um, leadership groups like the NRSC, you, you've got um, you know, McCarthy and McConnell and others who are in the trenches trying to hold back Biden. And yet um, there isn't enough of a, a unifying theme. There isn't enough of a, a voice at the top to say this is, you know, the direction we're running in. This is our banner uh, rally to these policy positions. Instead, you have some House member uh, sort of uh, shooting at the hip when it comes to policy positions and shifting the conversation in a really unrealistic way. Uh, rather than, than getting, you know, Republicans to, to march lockstep towards, you know, uh, whatever opposition front that they, they want to advance against uh, against the White House. I, I mean, look, Gozar, this is just not a, a serious policy proposal, and um, it's not going anywhere in the House. But I, I think it is interesting because it, it could, you know, perhaps reflect uh, at least what, what his constituents are telling him. That's what will be interesting to find out, because I think a lot of us, you know, when Trump would say things when he was running in 2016, we didn't think that some of the things he said would stick. And they did. So, it, I, I mean, I agree with you. I don't think this will stick. I don't think this is going anywhere. But it will be interesting to see, because what if it actually does? Uh, that would be, you know, definitely would make a change in some of the, the conversation that's happening, I suppose. I mean, it's just this lethal lack of message discipline, right, in the Republican Party. I actually think the Democrats don't have this problem to the same extent, or at least when you have kind of the further left members saying things that might, you know, alienate middle America, they're often also then condemned by other members of the Democratic Party. That doesn't hap seem to happen as much in the Republican Party, where the more fringe members who are catering to like, I don't know, a very online audience are, are, are allowed to just do whatever and then everyone else has to pretend like they're not saying those crazy things. Uh, is that, is, would you agree with that, Philip? Oh, I mean, look, the, the House Freedom Caucus's MO is lack of message discipline. <laughs> uh, the, the difference between now and like 2015 or 2016 is that, you know, when uh, guys like Dave Bratt or uh, Rail Labrador would sort of walk out of Tortilla Coast after their late Monday night strategy sessions, they would all sort of one up each other in, in sort of the same direction, right? They were always pushing in one direction, which was, you know, we, we need to fire the IRS commissioner or we need to bring back fiscal discipline to the budget or we want regular order. And they were going after Fainer and Ryan. And yeah, they, they might sort of uh, one up each other, but they were moving in the same direction. They were trying to pull the Republican Party uh, towards, you know, the conservative right. And, and there was some sort of semblance of what that was. With Gozar and others, it's sort of, um, you know, we, we don't like illegal immigration. And so we're also going to try this and see what happens here. Um, it's lack of message discipline. And uh, if Republicans uh, don't get it together, I mean, it, it could end up costing them because the, the, the former president is talking about 2020. Uh, we know that that undercut Republicans in Georgia. Um, they're they're going to need a, 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 a cohesive message in 2022 and 2024. And um, this sort of shiny object statement is, uh, is good for, you know, members to get headlines or trend on Twitter and sort of feed off of the, the outrage of their opponents. But I don't think it moves the ball forward. Yeah, I don't think yeah. so either. That's a really strong analysis. Thank you so much for being with us today, Philip. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys.
More rising after this.